Hi guys, welcome back to the Artist Server. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why size matters. And no, this isn't about being a dancing bear stripper. I'm talking about your strip size for hardware raid and software raid. Choosing the right strip size for your raid configuration has implications on your performance. So if you are using raid, you wanna make sure you understand this. I'll go over the theory of this concept, but I'll also have a visual demonstration to help you understand it. So before we get into it, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more people can benefit from the information I'm about to share with you. Also, if you're new to this channel and you're interested in building storage servers, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Let's get started by defining some terms. Specifically, let's define strip size, stripe width, and stripe size. So in this illustration, we have a RAID 0 volume with four drives. Now let's say we have a block of data that we want to store on this RAID 0 volume. RAID 0 means that we're going to break that data into small pieces and distribute them across all the drives. By doing so, we can potentially gain performance when we read that data back. Since it is distributed across four drives, we can potentially read all the segments of that data simultaneously from four drives instead of sequentially like we would from a single drive. If done correctly, we can potentially quadruple the data rate as we read that data back. With hardware RAID and even software RAID, we have to choose how we break that data up into chunks and how much of it we store on each individual drive in the RAID volume. The size of those data chunks is what we call the strip size. And this is one of the most important parameters you have to set when you configure your RAID volume. This is also known as the stripe element size and with Linux software RAID, it is known as the chunk size. The number of drives that are part of this RAID zero volume is the stripe width. In this case, the stripe width is four since we have four drives. And finally, the stripe size is the total amount of data in each stripe across all the drives in the RAID volume. We can calculate this by multiplying the strip size by the stripe width. So hopefully that explains all these terms and how data is stored on a RAID 0 volume. Now, as I said earlier, the strip size and consequently the stripe size has implications on your RAID 0 volume performance. The best performance is obtained when you can utilize all the drives simultaneously during an IO operation. This means the best performance is when your IO request size matches the stripe size and the requested data set is evenly distributed across all the drives. So that's the theory. Now let's do the demonstration. All right, so over here is an SSH terminal connected to my Supermicro 836 server with 16 drives. I'm running CentOS 7 Linux off a USB drive and I have a camera pointed at the front of the server where I'm going to capture the drive activity LEDs as we run this demonstration. For the demonstration, we're going to use Linux software RAID in two different scenarios. In the first scenario, I'm going to set up a RAID 0 array across the 16 drives with a chunk size of 128 kilobytes. In the second scenario, I'm going to set up the same RAID 0 array across 16 drives, but with a much larger chunk size of one megabyte. In both scenarios, I'll create a sample data file of 20 gigabytes filled from slash dev slash zero. And I'm going to run a series of five simple tests just using DD to read that sample file into dev null using a different block size each time. I'm going to iterate through block sizes of one kilobyte, 16 kilobyte, 128 kilobyte, one megabyte, and 16 megabytes. Each of these runs will also be done with direct IO enabled with the XFS file system on the RAID array. By doing so, we should avoid any buffering in RAM so that we are directly hitting the drives with IO operations. While these tests are running, I'll cut over to the footage from the camera watching the front of the server and I think we're gonna be able to see some interesting visuals. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is create the RAID uh, zero array across the 16 drives. So it's gonna be um, SDB through SDQ. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call this test-128K because we're gonna start with the 120K chunk size. This is gonna be a RAID uh, zero array, so level equals zero. 
and we're going to uh, add assume clean so we don't do any uh, array initialization, which we really don't need for this test. And of course, there are 16 devices. And the important 128K chunk size. And this is going to be on drives STB through SDQ. All right. Say yes. And uh, let's go ahead and format this uh, array with the XFS file system. All right, next, let's mount this under the slash data folder. And let's go in here. So there's nothing in here right now because we just created it, the uh, file system, everything. So let's go ahead and create the sample file. I'm just going to read in a bunch of zeros from dev zero and we'll, uh, I'll put this call into a file call sample. We'll make this a 20 gigabyte file. All right. So now that we have the 20 gigabyte sample file, we can start our test. All right, so the first test will be the uh, 1K test. So we will simply read this file back and dump it into dev null. And uh, I'll use the 1K uh, block size and we'll enable direct IO. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, guys, so here is the 1K test on 128K chunk size. And you can see that all the lights are blinking, but they're not completely in sync. So what's going to be more interesting is when we take a look at this in slow motion. So let me go ahead and slow this down by 10 times and show you what it looks like. All right, so here we are watching the activity LEDs at 1 tenth speed. And as you can see, it's pretty apparent that all the drives are not activating simultaneously. In fact, I think we are seeing maybe uh, one or at most two drives activating simultaneously. And that's because with the 1K record size uh, in this test, um, it, they're just too small uh, compared to the 128K chunk. And so the IOs are uh, basically spending a lot of time on each individual drive. And so we're seeing uh, basically only one or two drives activating at a time to service that request. So this type of uh, IO activity definitely is not able to take advantage of the 16 spindles in this RAID 0. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next test. All right, I'm going to stop the test at 60 seconds. And it looks like we got about 10.5 megabytes per second. So I'm going to go ahead and record this result here in the spreadsheet I prepared. And that way we can chart the uh, the pattern here. We'll see. All right, so next test is the 16K test. All right, so same thing. Let's go ahead. All right, so here we are watching the 16K test on 128K chunk. And this is in real time. And uh, all the activity LEDs are blinking uh, much faster than before, but um, if you look carefully, it's actually not fully in sync. So let's go ahead and look at this in slow motion. All right. So here we are watching the 16 K test, uh, on 120 K chunk size in one tenth slow motion. And so definitely it's more apparent here that we are seeing more of the drives activating simultaneously in this case. And so let me go ahead and pause one of these. All right. So in this case, we're seeing, uh, what's that? Six, eight eight out of the 16 spindles are activating simultaneously to service the IO requests uh, in this 16 K test. So definitely in this case, we are better able to utilize more of the spindles in this RAID zero array than we did in the previous one K test. So this is definitely going to be a higher performing use case scenario with this particular, um, 120 K chunk size setup. All right, so let me go ahead and let that run again. And I'll pause it one more time. Let's see here. All right, so this time we are seeing, what's that, three, five, six, seven, seven out of 16 drives 
activating simultaneously. So yeah, definitely we are seeing more of the drives activating simultaneously to service the 16K requests that are coming through in this test. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and move on to the next test here. All right, so stop the test at 60 seconds here and we got 97.7 megabytes. All right, the next test is the 128K test. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are looking at the 128K test on 128K chunk size. And you can see that at least on this real time speed, it looks like everything is activating simultaneously. Uh, but let's take a look at it in slow motion. All right, so here we are watching the 128K test on a 128K chunk size in one tenth slow motion. And you can see that we are definitely seeing more of the activity LEDs activating simultaneously than I think in the previous uh, 16K test. But let me go ahead and pause this for a moment here. All right, so here I have it paused and we're seeing, what's that, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten uh, drives activating simultaneously. Let me let it run again and I'll pause it once more. All right, so here we are and we are seeing six, uh, 12, 12 drives activating simultaneously uh, in this particular instance. So definitely the 128K test is now, I think, able to perform even better than the 16K test uh, because we are now using uh, larger um, record sizes that are traversing the entire stripe uh, of the RAID 0 uh, much quicker than in the previous um, tests. So definitely, uh, I think as we approach and pass the 120K chunk size, we're going to see um, better and better performance. And so let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the next test, which is the one megabyte test. All right, so for 128K test, we're definitely seeing an improvement in performance here. We had uh, we got a 175 megabytes per second. So let's go ahead and record this. And I think uh, once we pass the 128K chunk size we're going to start seeing a more dramatic uh, improvement in performance here. So the next test is the one megabyte test. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, here we are watching the one megabyte test on 128K chunk size in real time. And you can see that the activity LEDs look like they're all, all of them are completely solid uh, running here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this in slow motion. All right, so here we are watching the one megabyte test on 120K chunk size, and this is at one tenth speed slow motion. And even in slow motion, it looks pretty much like every LED is uh, blinking solid uh, activity. So yeah, this particular test, the one megabyte test, is really able to fully activate all spindles simultaneously. And so I think this is one of the tests that's gonna give us uh, the best performance uh, scenario in this case of the 128k chunk size. So yeah, definitely. Let me go ahead and pause this one of them. Uh, yeah. So even paused, uh, it looks like all 16 activity LEDs are activated. So this is definitely a scenario that is most optimal for this particular setup. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the final test, which is the 16 megabyte test. All right, so definitely we're seeing a, a uh, significant increase in performance now. And we got 1.1 gigabyte here. So let me just convert that to megabytes. So that's 1126.4. Uh, Let's go ahead and record that. All right, so the next test is the 16 megabyte test. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, so here we are watching the 16 megabyte test on 128K chunk size and the activity LEDs for the most part look like they're all activating simultaneously, but let's go ahead and look at this uh, again in slow motion. All right, so here we are watching the 16 megabyte test on 128K chunk size. And what's interesting in this case is that although 
it does look like all the activity, all 16 activity LEDs are activating somewhat simultaneously, but we are seeing some of them kind of blink out every now and then. So if I had to speculate on what's going on here, remember we are working with 128K chunk sizes, and that means uh, with 16 drives, the total stripe width is about two megabytes. That means every uh, every IO request, which is 16 megabytes, is traversing eight stripes. And so I suspect that each of these IO 16 megabyte requests is causing multiple IOs to go to each drive because we're traversing multiple stripes and possibly causing a little bit of IO contention on each drive. So I think we're gonna start seeing uh, a, a performance degradation in this case because this uh, test is just simply uh, causing a lot more IO than in the previous test. All right, so just as we kind of noticed from the activity LEDs um, at the front of the server, this scenario with a 16 megabytes uh, does seem to show a slight performance degradation. So we got 869. Let's go ahead and record that. All right, so the next uh, scenario is where we're gonna recreate the RAID uh, zero array with a uh, chunk size of one megabyte. So let me go ahead and get out of here so that we can unmount this. And MDADM, stop. All right, we'll stop that array. And uh, we'll recreate it. So I'll call this test-1m this time and we'll make sure that the chunk size is one megabyte. All right, so we can confirm that by looking at proc md stat. And so indeed we have one megabyte chunks. All right, so let's go ahead and format this. and mount under the slash data folder. And then we'll go in here. And of course we have nothing right now since we just created the file system. So, all right, so let's go ahead and create the sample file. And this time I'm gonna use uh, 16 megabyte blocks just because um, it'll be more optimal for uh, the one megabyte chunk size. So the count will then have to be 1280. All right, so now that we have the uh, sample file, we're ready to begin our test again. So let me call back the 1K test, see if we can get that. Yep, all right, there it is. So let's go ahead and run the 1K test on one megabyte chunks. All right, so here we are watching the 1K test on one megabyte chunk size. And even in real time speed, you can see that we're only seeing one drive activating at any given time here. So let's go ahead and watch this in slow motion, but I think it's already apparent what we're looking at here. All right, so here we are watching the 1K test on one megabyte chunk size. And as you can see, um, it is, yeah, literally we're seeing it uh, spend a lot of time on one drive at a time. And that's because these 1K requests are just so small compared to the one megabyte chunk size that a lot of the IO requests are just gonna get stuck on one drive at a time until it moves on to the next chunk and then the next drive is activated. And so definitely um, you can see the effect of choosing a horrendously bad chunk size for uh, this particular scenario because we are uh, doing these very, very small 1K IO uh, requests and the chunk size is just way uh, the, I don't know what's the word for opposite of optimal. Uh, so yeah, this is, it's going to be really, really slow. Basically, you're getting the performance of a single drive in this case, um, more or less. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this behaves as we move up to larger uh, record sizes in our testing. Uh, so the next test will be 16K. All right, so we're done with that. Let's do the 16K test on one megabyte chunks. 
All right, so here we are watching the 16K test on one megabyte chunk size, and we can see kind of a strobing effect uh, where the lights are not, they're all activating, but they're not activating simultaneously. So this is gonna be interesting. Let's go ahead and look at this in slow motion. All right, so here we are watching the 16K test on one megabyte chunk size, and this is at one tenth speed slow motion, and you can see that the lights are not all activating at the same time. We kind of have this slow motion uh, strobing effect, uh, but at any given time, it looks like we are maybe seeing two, perhaps maybe even three drives activating simultaneously. Let's go ahead and take a pause on this right here. So, okay, in this case, uh, we're seeing two uh, drives activated. Let me go ahead and unpause it again, and let's pause it again here. So again, we're seeing two drives. So I think, yeah, we're seeing basically at most two drives activating uh, simultaneously with the 16K requests uh, on a one megabyte chunk size. So definitely uh, we're seeing better performance than in the previous scenario. Um, definitely uh, seeing that. But again, uh, we're definitely not in the optimal space for this particular setup with the one megabyte chunk sizes. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next test. All right, so we got 96.9 megabytes per second. I actually forgot to uh, record this. So let's go ahead and record some of these numbers here. So we got for the 1K test, we got 10.6. And then for the 16K test, we just got 96.9. All right, so let's move on to the 128K test. All right, so here we are watching the 128K test on one megabyte chunk sizes, and we can see, well, we see a lot of stuff, uh, but let's let's take a look at this in slow motion and see what, what it actually looks like. All right, so here we are watching the 128K test on one megabyte chunk sizes on this RAID 0, and we are watching this in one-tenth slow motion. And from what I can tell, it uh, looks like maybe we are seeing two or perhaps three drives activating simultaneously. Let me go ahead and take a pause on this. And yep, so here we are, we're seeing three drives uh, in this particular instance. Let's go ahead and unpause it and I'll pause it again. And so right now we are seeing two drives in this uh, second instance. And so we're seeing two to three drives activating simultaneously on this 128K test, which is just uh, slightly better than the 16K test that um, we saw previously. I suspect we're going to, uh, obviously this is still not an optimal use case for this one megabyte chunk size uh, RAID 0 setup. Uh, but I think we're going to start seeing better performance as we move towards the one megabyte test and in particular probably the 16 megabyte test is going to be um, the best scenario for this case. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next test. All right, so for the 128K test, we got 193 megabytes per second. So we're definitely seeing an improvement as our uh, block size approaches the chunk size. All right, next test is the one megabyte test on a one megabyte chunk size. All right, so here is the one megabyte test on one megabyte chunk sizes. And this is what it looks like in real time. Let's go ahead and check this out in slow motion. All right, now we are watching the one megabyte test on one megabyte chunk sizes at one tenth slow motion. And as you can see, we are seeing more of the drives activating simultaneously, I think. But let's go ahead and pause this uh, footage for a moment here. All right, so in this case, we are seeing three activity LEDs activating simultaneously. Let me unpause that and pause again. We're seeing two, all right. And again, here we are seeing two and again, well, just one. So we are still not able to get an optimal uh, setup or optimal scenario for this one megabyte chunk uh, RAID zero. 
So let's go ahead and move on to the next test and see what we uh, get with the 16 megabyte test, which I suspect will be uh, the optimal scenario for this particular setup. All right, so for the one megabyte chunk uh, or the one megabyte block size on one megabyte chunk uh, RAID 0 array, we got 238 megabytes per second. So we're definitely seeing the performance improve as we uh, make the block sizes larger and larger and larger, but we are not seeing the peak that we saw in the uh, previous test because of the much larger chunk size. So I suspect we're gonna see the peak at the 16 megabyte uh, test. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here we are watching the 16 megabyte test on one megabyte chunk sizes in real time. And it kind of appears that like all the activity, all 16 drives are activating more or less uh, together, but let's see what this looks like in slow motion. All right, so here we are watching the 16 megabyte test on the one megabyte chunk size and we are seeing, uh, yeah, it looks like there's a few instances where all 16 drives are activating at the same time, but then we're kind of seeing them fade out a little bit and then come back. So I'm not really sure what that is about, but I do think that this should be the optimal uh, use case scenario for this particular chunk size with 16 drives in a RAID 0. So, um, but in either case, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let me just kind of pause this. Yeah, so in this case here, we are looking at what? That's uh, 6, 8, 10, 10 drives activating simultaneously. Let me unpause and then we'll pause again. And so we are seeing here 8 and 6, like 14 drives activating simultaneously. So we're definitely getting a lot more drives activating simultaneously to service those IO, uh, 16 megabyte IO requests. Uh, but we are not seeing uh, all 16, at least not so far, maybe, um, here, let me just try one more time and, oh, okay. So here's one instance where we are getting all 16, uh, activity LEDs, uh, activated at the same time. So, so definitely, I think, I mean, at least within the scenarios that we've tested so far with the one megabyte chunk size, this seems to be the best so far. Uh, but it, it doesn't seem to be uh, getting uh, what I had perhaps expected that all the lights would basically be uh, on solid. Um, but, you know, maybe if we, uh, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Well, anyway, let's, let's see what the actual numbers uh, look like in terms of the throughput from DD. All right, so we got um, 891. 891. So just as I had suspected that uh, we would get the peak at the 16 megabyte uh, test. All right, guys, to sum it up, we were able to demonstrate how the chunk size or strip size can affect the various IO patterns we tested with DD from the very small 1K records to 16 megabyte records. The closer the stripe size matches the IO pattern, the better performance we were able to obtain. And we were able to visually see this by the drive activity LEDs showing us how many spindles were working simultaneously to service those IO requests. I hope the visual demonstration was helpful. At least to me, I think it helps to be able to see visually what is otherwise relatively abstract. So the next time you're setting up a RAID array, I hope you'll have a better idea of how to configure the strip size in the most optimal way for your particular IO use case. Question of the day, what strip size do you use and for what use case? Leave a comment down below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel and you like this sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Also, if you want to support this channel, go check out my eBay store. I have the greatest selection of pre-flash IT mode HBA SAS controllers for your ZFS, TrueNAS, and Unraid builds. Check out the link down in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.